Today's an exciting day. We're gonna be learning how to load data into our database as well as create a table to store that data. Now, if you wanna follow along with me, you can. Uh, I've made videos on how I've configured my personal computer to run a SQL Server as well as how to create a database. And I will link those videos in a playlist down in the video description as well as on the screen right now. So if you want to watch those, you can click that playlist and you can click it. However, don't worry, the knowledge that we're talking about today should apply to most databases. And as long as you have read and write access in that database, you should be able to use this video to create a table and load data. So with that said, before we jump in, please consider subscribing liking this video and leaving a comment. It's what really lets me know that you like this content, that you're finding it useful and that you're learning something from it. And I wanna make videos that help you. So now let's jump into the computer and let's create a table and load some data. First thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and open up SQL Server Management Studio, which is what we're using to connect to our our SQL software. So I just opened it up. I typed in SS. Here it is, SQL Server Management Studio 20. Then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open this up. While it's loading, remember that we're going to be logging into the SQL Express database that we created. Remember that this is a SQL server that we're running locally. So when we log in, if you haven't already, you'll need to have your server name be localhost SQL Express and then you'll authenticate in with your Windows authentication. You'll go ahead and you'll click the connect button. This will log you into the server and then you can go into databases. And if you have a database already that you're trying to log in, you'll see it here, but we're gonna click new query and we're gonna create a database for us to learn SQL in. All right, so if you've watched the previous video, you already know how to do this, but I'm gonna create a database by typing create database SQL practice. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to run that. And I'm going to get a commands completed successfully command. If I go over, highlight my server, click the refresh button, and then expand my databases, you'll see I now have a database to go ahead and to create my table for us to load data into. If you're following along with this series where you're learning SQL from me and from this grouping of videos, this is going to be the database that we are going to continue our lessons on and in. So make sure to not delete it. And congratulations on making it this far. This is a big deal. You're investing in yourself and that's something you should be proud of. All right, so the data that we're gonna be loading in this video is this orders CSV. And if you're following along with me in this tutorial, I will have this file linked in my GitHub available for you to download. Now, because we're gonna be loading this data, we need to create a table to store it in, in our database. A table is a structured set of data that's organized into rows and columns. It's really the fundamental building block for storing information in a relational database like the one we have here. You can think of it like a spreadsheet or a grid. Here's kind of be kind of a breakdown of the key components of a table. You're going to have the table, which is the overall container holding the data. You're then going to have the columns, which is essentially the different type of data that's being stored. So for example, we're going to have a column for order ID, customer ID, order date, and total amount in this column. And each one of these columns is going to have a name and then a data type. And if you're not familiar with data types in a SQL Server, that was my previous video on this playlist and in this series where I'm teaching you how to learn SQL. So I'd recommend watching that, but we're gonna create four columns. Uh, we're going to create a column for order ID that's gonna have a data type of a big int because the integer data type can only store up to about 2 billion numbers. Same with the customer ID. We're going to create a column with a data type of a big int for the same reason. Our hypothetical e-com order business is, has big dreams. <laughs> so we're going to have 2 billion customers. We're going to create an order date of a date data type. And then we're going to create a total amount 
of a decimal data type. Then the next piece of the table is we're going to have the rows, which these rows represent the individual records. So like this will be a row, this will be a row, and this will be a row. All right, hopefully you followed that. So now let's jump in and let's write some SQL. Okay, so we're going to go back into this query and we're going to start by going create. So the same thing we did for the database, then table. Then we'll give it a table name. So in this case, it'll be orders. I'm going to go all lowercase for this. Then we're going to go open parentheses. And we're going to start listing out our columns along with the data type. So we're going to go order ID. And we're going to go big int. And then we're going to add a primary key constraint. And what this means is that this column should be unique across the table. So, right, so there's only one row per order, and their uh, order IDs can't repeat. So that's good. Then we'll go customer ID, go big int, comma, and then we'll go order date. And I'm actually going to switch these to underscores. So that that what I'm doing here with the naming convention is typically preference. I tend to like having all of my table and column names in lowercase with an underscore representing the space. But different developers will have different preferences and you will develop your own. So I'm gonna go date and then finally I'm gonna go total amount and I'll go decimal and then I'll go 10. So that's indicating it's 10 characters long two decimal places, so indicating the precision. And right there, I did it again, so I'm gonna fix this. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make sure that I am in my SQL database. I'm gonna switch it right over here to from master to SQL practice, and then I'm gonna go ahead and click this execute button. And just like that, it'll say commands completed successfully. I'll go and I'll reload this database. And now when I expand this and go down to the tables, right there is my DBO orders table. So now we need to add some data to that table. So let's go ahead and write our SQL statement to bulk load data from this CSV into this table in the database. But before we do that, I'm gonna delete this out. I'm gonna show you how to just insert in a single row. So I'm going to go insert into, and I'm going to give it our table name. So SQL practice, because that's our database dot DBO dot orders. And then I will go and I'll list out our column uh, IDs. So I'll go order underscore ID, customer underscore ID, order underscore date, and then total underscore amount. And I'll just check those column names are correct by clicking right here clicking columns, making sure they're all the same, right? And then I'll go new line and I'll go values and then I'll give it the values, right? So one, you know, six, one, three, three, and then I'll go my date of 2024-01-01 and I'll say it is of zero dollars and 20 cents. I'll go ahead and I'll run this and we'll get right here one row affected because there's one row inserted and now when we go and we right click over to this table and we go uh, select top 100 rows we get just that one row. I'm going to go ahead and now show you how to delete that row because we're going to want to do a bulk insert in from our CSV so I'm just going to type delete from dbo.orders and I'll run this, and just like that, we got one row is affected, and we go when we go back into this, and we go uh, select top 1,000 rows and rerun this, we get zero rows. Okay, it's now time to do our bulk insert. So a bulk insert is when we insert data in mass from a file into our database. So we can do that with a command that goes bulk insert, and then we'll go SQL underscore practice, dot dbo dot orders and we'll go from and we'll give it the location of our file so in this case it's on my c drive backslash users 
backslash edwar backslash orders dot csv and then we'll give it some settings so we'll say with the format as a csv All right so we'll go format equals csv then we'll go with the field quote so inserting like what uh, our strings enclosed with double quotes or single quotes um, field quote equals and we'll go in here there in double quotes and I misspelled quote there Q U O T and then we'll go row terminator so like what indicates the end of a row which in this case is a new line so we'll go backslash n and then we'll go back down and we'll say the first row because we have headers in this file is the second row so when we run this what we should see is we should see it insert in a hundred thousand rows of orders which it did so now when we go right back over to this dba orders we right click select top 1000 rows look at all of that data we just loaded so that is how you load a database i'd encourage you to go and download the file from my github and try it on your own local computer if you run into any problems, let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to help you out. And if you want to continue on this SQL journey with me, which I hope you do, please consider subscribing and liking this video. It lets me know that you're enjoying them and I'll continue making them. Slowly building video on top of video, uh, helping you become a better data analyst. With that, I hope you have a good evening and I hope you learned something today. Thanks for watching.